So in this video, I'll be guiding through a four-step process for planning your goals in Notion, along with some bonus tips at the end to help you stay on track. We all have different priorities, and therefore the first things to do is to list down our areas of focus. This is my goal tracker page in Notion. At the top of the page, I have a database called Areas. It's a simple view with just the page name and icon. Let's say this year, I'm planning to be more financially responsible, I will first add an area for it. Let's name this page Finance and add a nice icon to represent it. So at this point, you might notice the goals database appears automatically on the page body. This happens because I've set up a default template for this database, which means every time I create a new area page, there will be this goals database that comes with it. On this goals database is where I can start writing down my goals for this area. So first, let's write down the goal to save up an emergency fund. Let's say this is the total amount I want to save for the year. Next, I'll open up the goal page. And currently you can see that there's no property where we can write down our why for the goal. And therefore we'll go to customize layout and add a new text property. I will name this property Y and then reorder it to where I want to see it before clicking on apply to all pages. And back on the goal page, I can now write down my why for this goal. So you might notice that I only set a start date and not a due date when I added this goal. So opening up the sidebar of this page where you get to view more details, you will see that I have a due date property already filled in because it's automatically calculated based on the goal type, which in this case is 12 months and the start date. So below it, we also have a days left property that displays the countdown between today's date and the due date. And there's also a property called custom due date that allows you to manually set a specific due date instead of using the calculated one. So for instance, if you prefer your goal to align with the calendar year, you can set a custom due date for it. Now that we have a longer term goal, we can break it down into a smaller and more immediate target to start working on. To reach the $10,000 saving goals in 12 months, we can aim to save $2,500 each quarter. Let's create that as a sub goal to save $2,500 in the next 12 weeks. I'll resize the column slightly to better see the full text of my goal. We can then open this goal page to fill in more details. To remind ourselves of our overarching goal and our why, we can go into our parent goal and then copy our why into this sub goal. The next step is to track a measurable metric of your goal. Let's first open the sidebar to see more details and properties of this page. You can see that we have a section called metrics with four properties, with the first three being number properties and the last one being a progress bar. So for this particular goal, we can set 2500 as the target value, which is the amount we are aiming to save. The start value is typically zero, but let's say in this example, you have already saved $500 before setting this goal. You can enter that as your starting value. Your current value when first setting this up will be the same as your starting value. But for demonstration purposes, let's say I've saved another 500 today. I can then update the current value to 1000 and you will see the progress bar increase to 25%. For this example of a financial goal, it's easily measurable. However, do know that not all goals are measurable or have metrics that you can track. So how else can you monitor your progress and ensure that you stay on track to achieve your goals? This brings us to the final step of bringing goals into actionable tasks. This is a crucial step because I think this is the closest thing to execution and taking action. Procrastination and inaction often stems from being intimidated by a big goal or being unclear about the next step to take. So list down small actionable tasks that can help us make progress on a daily basis or weekly basis. After closing the sidebar, I can scroll down to the page body to see a task view where I can start writing down tasks for this goal. An immediate next step for this particular goal could be opening a new savings account. I can write that down and then assign a date and priority to it. Another step could be auditing my current expenses and subscriptions. Again, I'll then assign a date and priority to it. On second thought, this task can involve a few steps. So let's break it down into subtasks to ensure we are clear on the exact action that we need to take. Now we have some clear actionable tasks to work on. Let me just resize the column to see this task better. I can also quickly assign the same date and priority for this subtask if I plan to batch complete them in one sitting. So it's great that we have some actionable tasks to work on now, but some of you might wonder what about recurring tasks that help with making progress towards your goal. So let's say that I plan to start logging my weekly expenses to become more mindful of my spending. So to create that as a recurring task in Notion, we can use a repeating template. We first navigate to the blue new button on the task database and then click on the down facing arrow and then select new template. On this page, I'll first write down the recurring task. For the page icon, you can add a different icon that you would for your usual task, maybe like a repeat icon so that you can easily identify it as a recurring task. Then we'll set the date to date when duplicated. 
and we can also give this task a priority. After exiting this view, I will return to my database templates, click on the three dots beside the template we just created, and then turn on repeat, and choose weekly. So from here, we can customize which day of the week we want it to repeat, and for this particular task, I will like to have that at the end of the week, and then hit save. And that concludes our fourth and final step of breaking down our goals into actionable steps. So before you go, I have some additional tips for you. Some of you might resonate with this. You get through the initial planning stage, but then later you struggle to stay consistent with using the system or following through the plan that you have laid out. I totally get this because it happens to me too whenever I adopt a new system. But I do find that after a certain point, you do get used to the system and it becomes habitual to open up like my second main page every day and to review my tasks, to review my projects. So hopefully these tips can help you get through the initial stage of being consistent with using this goal tracking system. So the first tip is to add a cover to each goal page. You can see that I already have gallery covers for my other goals. So this is a feature of the gallery view in Notion, where you can go to the layout settings to turn on card preview. Compared to looking at just text, visual elements can catch our attention more effectively and better remind us of our goals, especially if you use photos that inspire you or motivate you. For me personally, I prefer to stick to the minimalist style, so I choose these simple covers for my goals with an icon in the center that represents the goal. So let's show you how I can add a cover to the goal we created earlier. Opening up the page, we can go back to the sidebar where you will see that I have a property called Gallery Cover. So on this property, I can upload a cover I have created or downloaded from online. So once it's uploaded, I can exit this view and I can now see the cover right on the front. This makes your goal more clickable and more visible. The next tip is to update the metric for your measurable goals routinely. So being able to see our progress and growth is satisfying. On the metrics tab of our goals view, it displays the start, current, and target value along with the progress bar that we saw in step 3. By updating the current value regularly, we can better visualize our progress and remind ourselves how far we have come. The last tip is to make it easy to see your goals as frequently as possible. You can start by copying the link to your goals view and then navigate to a dashboard or page that you frequently visit. For example, I know that I open out my second main page daily because that's where my tasks are at. So what I do is that I paste and add my goals view right at the top of this page. And to wrap it up, I will just add a heading above this view to maintain consistency with the rest of the page. With everything covered in this video, I hope you now see how Notion can actually be a pretty great tool to help you break down your goals and monitor your progress. So go take advantage of it and achieve amazing things this year. If you're interested in getting this exact goal tracking system, you can find the link to purchase this template in the description below. And see you in the next video.